hi there gang and welcome back to another Active Ideas video. We're looking again at the Garmin 955 Solar. This is the white version and hopefully Garmin have managed to fix the issues that I had with the first one with the dust in the screen and also dust in the heart rate sensor. If you haven't seen that video, click down in the description. We had DC Rainmaker and Chase Summit comment on the videos. So we're gonna see if this has been fixed, updated uh, four weeks later, you know, since the release date. So here we go. I've got the Spyderco UK PK knife to open up this box. It's the white model today. And just a little heads up, I did open this last night because I got really excited. So this is a bit of a reenactment, but there were bubbles again on the screen. So yeah, I've got the original footage of that, but unfortunately I have found dust under the screen exactly where that bubble is. So it does seem to be quite a serious manufacturing issue that it's not only affecting the black 955s, but also the white ones as well. I hope I'd avoid it this time. So yeah, I've taken off the manufacturing screen protector and uh, you can get a Fenix 7, which I've just got here, for around £575 in the UK. So there's a link for that in the description if you want to check it out. And to be honest, for the quality control issues that we're having at the moment with the 955, it is something that I do recommend you probably consider. And I'm a Garmin fan, I'm not hating on the 955. I've been very excited for this, uh, but it might just be worth holding off for the moment and maybe looking at some other options. So yeah, you'll take the placeholder out and it's containing the 955, just release the strap to take it out um, and yeah, this little foam thing comes off. And here we have it, this is the 955 Solar that I've got here and obviously the white model. It's looking beautiful, I like the front, I like the back, um, it's a bit of a statement. And obviously just take note of the black face as well. So we're just diving a bit further into the box here. First of all, pulling out the safety information. Uh, you also have a booklet for the product information and then you have this quite thick manual as well. So that's quite cool. And you can check out all of the kind of basic as well as quite complicated instructions that are in there, such as running dynamics, for example. But something as simple as switching the watch on is also there too. Now one thing I must absolutely rave at is that you do get a uh, strap holder within the box. So this is a spare strap holder. I've had these break all the time. I had a bit of an issue of them breaking on my Vivo Active 3 back in the good old days. So yeah, this is going to give you six years of peace. I suspect the first one will last you three years, if not longer. And then you've got this second one as spare and obviously the same color as the watch you ordered. So just a heads up, I have got a sapphire screen on my Fenix 7, but you haven't got that on the 955. So make sure to protect it with the screen protector. Links for that if you want in the description. Also, we have a charging cable. So we've pretty much checked out everything in the box here. The charging cable, the strap holder, and the booklets. And that's you ready to go. And let's switch on the device, shall we? Let's go. So just diving straight into quality control, you can see the digitizer on this watch and that's what obviously enables the touchscreen, but you can't see that on the Fenix 7, so I'll just show you what that is now. Also, you can see where the solar rings are attached, which is interesting. Light can leak out of those. Uh, and last thing as well is that there is a gap just where the casing meets the glass of the screen, um, but it's not equal so to the bottom left hand corner I'm having quite a big gap and there's lots of I don't know if it's glue or dust that I can't get out um, and it's obviously a bit annoying for a watch that is about half a grand uh, but it, it is cheaper than a Fenix so you know you've got that so let's put this bad boy on shall we let's have a look there we go uh, if you've got smaller wrists like me I'm kind of on the smaller side of a male uh, maybe a kind of larger female wrist size kind of the thickness on the wrist uh, and this is what the watch faces look at the front so just to compare those two for you so one thing you probably instantly notice is that I've changed the watch face um, when I switched it on um, and that's offering you something a little bit similar to what I've got on the Fenix 7 here so yeah if I touch the heart rate it will take me to the heart rate sunset and sunrise it will take me to that app and I like that it's very interactive so it's taking me to the weather here with the highs and lows you can even hold down the VO2 max part here and it'll take you to the VO2 max setting where you can swipe through your kind of estimated times for your current marathon half marathon paces on the 955 i have obviously got this off of garmin connect because it's a little bit more similar to what you'd get on a fenex you can't interact with anything so if you hold anything down it's not going to take you to that specific widget if i just change the watch face back by going holding down going on to watch face and click it back onto the uh, what it comes with which is this one apply and just have a look at how much we can interact with this. I mean, we'll try and swipe through. I try and hold down. So it can be a bit awkward to get through your menus here when you're trying to have a look at everything and you can't interact with anything such as the date or the time, your battery or the widgets at the bottom here. Again, this is a month on now. So this has been updated through Garmin Connect as soon as I switched it on to the latest firmware. 
um, and it should be working fine. Okay, so we'll get quick courses up on the Fenex 7. Cool, so I've just done the Hadrian's Wall, which is a 70 mile run from Carlisle to Newcastle. It was an amazing experience. If you want to watch that vlog, yeah, check out my channel. We're going to try and load that course on here. And again, I thought it was important to have the course with me because over the course of 70 miles, obviously you could potentially get lost and it's nice to have that. So Rat Race Hadrian's Wall, 68 miles. We're going to try and load the course. Um, and here we go. Oh, there we go. That's better. So we've loaded the course. We'll click do course and see what happens. Okay, so we've crashed. So the maps aren't fixed a month on, which is a bit of an issue. We'll have a look at the quick sight and go as well. Oh, we're stuck in. And that try keeps the map on. So people saying that it was a faulty device, it's just not true. This is exactly the experience everyone's getting at the moment. Um, Garmin haven't fixed this a month on. You've really got to spam your button to get out. We'll try and access it another way then. We'll go into run first. Navigation, courses, rat race Hadrian's wall, do course. Really hoping it's loaded now. Cool, so we've got the Hadrian's wall rat race ultra up on the uh, 955 as well. Obviously noting some swiping issues in terms of going through the map it was quite hard to find because the screen goes completely black and you kind of lose where you are. So it's gone blank and you, all of a sudden you're in the sea. I try and go back, it goes blank, I'm, I'm in the sea again, I've gone too far that way. So again on the Fenix 7 there's no kind of issues with swiping to the right and the screen going blank. It's uh, a little bit easier to go through if I just actually use the buttons. Uh, so we'll go up and down. So we're going up and down and the screen's staying there so you can kind of see where you're about to stop. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop halfway through the run and now we're in Newcastle. So if you look at the difference between we're swiping through here, seeing where we're going, and then if I try and have a look at the route on this one, we're kind of getting a white screen and we're in the sea. So I, I don't know what's happening with the refresh rate there, but it's just very disorientating because you, you lose where you are. We're just going to see how the touchscreen does. So I'm managing to swipe right, let's swipe left and go the other way and we're kind of kicked out. So you can see there's still a lot Garmin needs to do to fix the 955. I am happier that the dust in the screen isn't as bad as last time. But remember this is a 550 pound watch so it's still a lot of money and I think that these kind of things do need to be sorted out. Uh, in terms of button quality, I mean the buttons on my Fenex feel pretty good. I've had people, I've seen people not be too fond of them, but especially on this 7S, um, no issues at all with the with the buttons. They're all kind of very responsive. You can hear them clicking. Uh, they're a bit mushy on the 955. Nothing to complain about though. Very responsive. Up and down is responsive. The light button's responsive. This start button's feeling a bit iffy, not as nice for sure as the very clicky kind of Fenix 7 button here, which I think is on all models. You've got this kind of like pressure button here. So I'm just going to take you for a quick tour of the widgets. So this is the watch face. Here we've got my uh, VO2 max scores and also my training predictions. Uh, the next one is the training status. I've got some more data on that now, but at the minute it's still trying to figure out where I am. But it's saying my load is optimal. So here's a really nice graph. Um, I can look at my load focus, so I've got a nice balanced aerobic and anaerobic distribution. Again, you can access your VO2 max from this uh, window. HRV status, so last night I had an average of 65 milliseconds and also the highest and the lowest. Cool graph as well. And then here you've got the recovery hours. It tells you what it, you need to do as well in terms of rest or take it easy and stuff. So I really do like that. Training readiness at the minute, uh, at the moment, is not showing anything, but it's a really cool feature when it is working. I had it working on the last one. Um, if you want to see that, just skip to my full review, to be honest. But you can look at stuff such as HRV status, stress, recovery, sleep, and it calculates all those things together. On the notifications, you can look at all of your kind of phone notifications, Instagram, WhatsApp, all that stuff. On weather, you've got the weather app, so what the temperature is. If it's going to rain, the chances of rain. You can look at the days of the week and also the humidity. Really cool feature with the dew point there. Music controls, you can control Spotify. You can control music on your phone. That's my favorite feature because I like to blast it out of my speaker um, and you can put music on the watch as well so I, I haven't done that but you can do that and there's lots of space 32 gigabytes I think to add music if you want sleep again so I got six hours last night I've got a sleep score of 75 a assessment of it being a fair sleep you've got the distribution of sleep um, in light 
REM, deep sleep and stuff like that and also a kind of um, graph that you can look at so really cool here you've got like the trainings you've done so this is the last run was 69 miles um, not my usual kind of run but you can look through the training you've done throughout the week so I like that you've got a good training log on your watch um, if you want to look on it instead of Garmin Connect it's really kind of cool really if you just get bored on the toilet you know <laughs> You can actually dive into your runs as well, so you can look at kind of all the stats that was collected. So yeah, you can look at your heart rate, your training effect, um, or the pace, how much you walked, your calories, your anaerobic, aerobic distribution. Yes, it's uh, it's wicked. Um, flicking through here, what else have we got? We've got the compass, the ABC. So yeah, with the ABC, you've got the compass, you've got the altimeter bar barometer, and then the, another compass at the bottom as well with the degrees and stuff. We have the alternative time zones. We've got the body battery, so you can see how much battery and energy you have throughout the day. I really like this actually, and I found it to be extremely accurate. So yeah, I, I highly recommend using body battery. Calories, you can see your active calories during the day, but also you can see just your general calories that you've burnt throughout the day and throughout the week. Health snapshot, uh, not much you can do here to be honest, apart from see that the previous health snapshots you've collected, but it would be nice if you could start it from this widget. Uh, you've got heart rate, self-explanatory, you've got your height, your low, you've got the graph, stuff like that. Primary race, I haven't got a race lined up at the moment, but this will be able to tell you how many days to your race and how to train for it, stuff like that. So you've also got the pulse ox, you can look at how much oxygen's in your blood. You've got the race calendar, so I'm going to be adding my race events to this soon. Respiration rate, so how much you're breathing. Solar intensity, you can't really see much on here apart from the high and the low. Your steps throughout the day, you've also got your stress levels which is really cool actually you've got your sunset and sunrise really like that and the twilight how wicked temperature uh, you can change this to celsius if you want i'll be doing that in a second um, again highs and lows you've got your mountain acclimatization so if you're up in altitude you can check that your last cycling activity you've got your battery apps just going to tell you how many uh, percentages you're draining per day so you can see at the minute i need to uh, obviously reset this and charge it because i've just installed it on a factory watch that's just been turned on so it's a bit crazy but we'll get that calibrated soon uh, and also the park run so i really like to have a park run app so you can just rock up with your barcode and stuff now if you're still here enjoying the content please leave a comment because uh, you're an absolute nerd and you're like me uh, in the description it'd be funny to look at these comments but yeah this is how long it takes to switch the devices on so we're looking at the startup speed here look at that you didn't think you'd get startup speed today did you um, I think the 955 wins, if I can remember correctly, by a few seconds, we'll, have, we'll give it a few seconds to load. This is all real time, I haven't sped it up, so yeah, 955 is good to go. Um, the Garmin 7S is still trying to figure out what's going on. Although, having some weird touch issues on the, on the uh, 955, because it's switched on, so I think it's just booting up or something. Because I check here, is what I'm doing, I'm saying, have I got touch switched on? I have. Oh, it's just not not working. So we'll go and use touch again. Not working. And then I believe it starts to work eventually after I uh, attack it. <laughs> so yeah, just a few few uh, bugs on the 955. But I, I have been enjoying using this, to be honest. And it is a good kind of high-end trifle and watch and it's got countless of features so hope you enjoy using it too anyway that's everything i hope it's been really informative and if you want to subscribe for more i'm looking to go a bit more professional with the stuff i do keep watching like comment and subscribe um, and thank you i can't wait to put out hopefully some really awesome reviews i am actually looking forward to reviewing the 955 and i'll be fair and i'll be honest and again i hope it's a very informative video for you review viewers ciao Thanks for watching, you know the drill, like, comment and subscribe if you can. My slogan, dreams are a step away, remember, show compassion, show esteem and have fun out there. Peace out.